Spotted Horses by William Faulkner. I'm Alexander Camacho, part of Group 7. William Faulkner was born in 1897 in Mississippi to a prosperous family with strong ties to Southern history. He was even named after, after his great-grandfather who commanded a Confederate re regiment in the Civil War. He inspired Faulkner to write fiction by being an author himself. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1950 and received the Pulitzer Prize and National Book Award for A Fable, written in 1954. Fun tidbit, he, he was known to be a heavy drinker and a great teller of tall tales. Writing style. Faulkner makes sure to portray Southern customs and attitudes in his storytelling. He also sets most of his works in the fictional Southern location of Yakna Patafa County. He has very distinct literary styles from fragmented to more lengthy sentences representing the minds of multiple characters known as Faulknerian. He is known for his vivid imagery and immersive use of language like that of Spotted Horses where he takes on the dialect and language used in the South. Spotted Horses. Um, although published earlier in 1931, Spotted Horses is set second in a series depicting the Snopes family, with Barn Burning, written in 1938, showing the sharecropping family and Abner Snopes' destructive tendencies of arsony and themes of powerlessness. The Snopes family comes to represent the callous and selfish aspect of humanity, taking advantage of the bu bureau bureaucracy of society to get what a person's uh, to get a person's own way. The summary of Spotted Horses um, is set in the American South where the population consists of poor white folk trying to survive in the rural, rural Wild West. The protagonist is Flem Snopes, the now older brother from the Snopes family of barn burning. Like his younger brother, Flem has chosen to leave his sharecropping past to pursue the business of being a calculating con man. Flem rides in a wagon full of two dozen untamed horses with a Texan man, his partner in crime. The Texan's true talent and conmanship is shown in his talent to sell these wild horses at an auction the next day, where people come from miles away to bid three to three to seven dollars. Henry Armstead is the first to pay for a horse with $5 of his own wife's money. Not wanting for any buyers to return, return horses, however, the Texan has all buyers wait until the end of auction to receive their horses. After nearly beating his wife with a rope for failing to corner his horse, Henry is forced to take his money back and leave the vicinity, where he strongly ref refuses and has Flem keep the money so he can receive his horse. The Texan tells them to come the next day if they want the horse. After Flem and the Texan leave town, Henry grows impatient and barges into the corral to claim his horse, but is soon trampled nearly to death by a stampede that releases all the horses into the city, into, into the town. One even enters the home of Mrs. Little John, the lady Flem and the Texan come to for supper, and startles the narrator and sewing machine salesman V.K. Ratliff. After forcing the horses out, Mrs. Little John, along with neighbors, help set Henry's broken leg into place. Mrs. Armstead is then forced to nurse her husband at Little John's home while attending to her family back home. She is skeptical for a few days about being able to get back the $5 from Flem and finally asks him in the shop he clerks for, for the money. After being given the excuse of the Texan leaving with her money and a bag of candy as a form of comfort, Mrs. Armstead stiffly walks back to Little John's home. Mrs. Armst Armstead's pr perspective. Entry one. I have been pleading with Henry all day not to go to that terrible horse auction in Yakna Patau. He is fully aware that we barely have enough money to feed our family and here is here he is spending money on a large animal we can't afford i feel so helpless in this relationship 
Entry 2. I am overwhelmed with a sense of defeat having been sent back to our rundown wagon by Henry. He was so eager to buy the horse that he forced us to be the first buyer there. And even worse, he used my hard-earned cash from weaving to buy an untamable horse. I tried to curse the auctioneer from grabbing my money, but I know I'm as harmful as a fly. I don't know what to do. Entry 3. There is no pleasing that man. After attempting to help capture his stupid horse, Henry beats me with a whip two times, when in actuality, he's the animal. Fortunately, my weakness must have given the auctioneer some pity as he grabbed the rope from Henry's hand and gives me back my $5. Henry takes back my sense of power only a second later as he hands the money to the auctioneer's partner, for which he demands we come back tomorrow. Entry number four. Not only am I physically exhausted from having to tend to my husband at Little John's and my children back home, but I am emotionally shot worrying about financial issues, security for my family, and the well-being of Henry for his now broken leg. After debating with Mrs. Littlejohn about asking Flem about my $5 and agitating her, I decide to stand up for myself for once and demand my money at the store he clerks. But once he meekly says the Texan man has run off with my money, I crawl back into my pathetic shell. I should be mad at only getting a sack of candy from Flem but I can only walk back to the Little John's with my, ha- with my head held high and tears streaming down my face. Horses as symbolism. Horses are often portrayed as demonic and for folklore as they represent an attractive evil. Um, a quote that stood out was, Color- they were colored like parrots and quiet as doves, and any a one of them would kill you quick as a rattlesnake. Their silent and unrestrained power is a sharp contrast that easily that is easily marketable to the feeble-minded and feeble-minded masses of the poor and rural South. None of them had eyes of the same color, and none were tamed or trained. They would bite and kick one another against the barn and make a sound like a gunshot with the banging. The main theme of the story is immorality. The story centers on different levels of of immorality displayed in the low VK Ratliff, which is the narrator, the middle, which is the Texan, and the extreme, which is Flem Snopes, as these are all con men by trade. Ratliff is a con man by trade, but works earnestly selling sewing machines and not to take advantage of the buyer. The Texan, however, uses the gullibility of his investors to get the most for his buck like selling untamable horses as domesticated animals. He is not ultimately evil since he does not keep Henry Armstead from beating his wife a third time. In this way, he redeems himself. Flem Snopes is a prototype of a calculating and deceitful con man, as he is portrayed throughout the novel as um, a deceitful man. A quote that stood out was, could, he could make a nickel where it wasn't but four cents to begin with. He also clearly represents this bigger picture of insensitive capitalism, as he is never very present in the story, but always seems to stay in the background. He stole the horses, lets the Texan do all the work of selling them, and in the end lies to Mrs. Armstead to keep her money.